These games have been modified from their original versions. They have been formatted to fit your screen. DOS. It spanned two decades and took us through many video standards. CGA, EGA, VGA, 320x200, a resolution among many others of its time that doesn't make sense in today's world. The simple truth is that computing moved from 4 to 3 to widescreen some time ago, and while it's a safe assumption that an old resolution, such as 320x200, would be 4 to 3, something doesn't add up, or perhaps more accurately, something doesn't divide quite right. In the modern era of fixed pixel displays, aspect ratio can be found easily by dividing the resolution's width by its height. It works because an individual pixel's width and height are the same. When you see 1920 by 1080, you can divide those numbers and find that it's a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Likewise, 1440 by 1080 is a 4 to 3 aspect ratio. And thus, the simple way to find a resolution's aspect ratio is to perform this division. But what about that 320 by 200 resolution I mentioned earlier? One of the most common resolutions used in DOS gaming. Dividing the width of 320 by the height of 200 gives you 1.6. Not the decimal you are expecting, instead you get a widescreen aspect ratio. Something is wrong. Images, videos, and emulators today are plagued by an improper aspect ratio when representing old PC games. Is it indifference amongst the gamers and video creators? Or are people blissfully unaware? Maybe you don't care, but I care. So here we are. While it may seem that the graphics of old games are simply a lower resolution in 2D with fewer colors, in reality there is one key component that people tend to ignore. Many of these low resolutions made use of non-square pixels, and this is the reason why simple division doesn't work for old school aspect ratios. It is also the origin of what comprises most of the stretched images of DOS games scattered across the web today. A CRT paints an image to the screen from top to bottom and left to right. I covered this in a bit more detail in the History of 240p video. Because of this display methodology, the images aren't restricted to a fixed pixel matrix. They have the freedom to fill a 4 to 3 display. Therefore, 320 by 200 can easily be a 4 to 3 image. But here's the rub. Realistically, the aspect ratio of video output displayed on a CRT monitor is subjective. This is the manual for a Super VGA monitor I acquired around 1992 or 93. The monitor is long gone, but the manual is perhaps more useful. This monitor, like many others of its time, had analog knobs on the bottom of the front panel that let you manually adjust the image's horizontal and vertical size and position on the screen. As noted here, the factory default positions should be ideal for the display modes mentioned. If you strayed from these modes and their frequencies, or you just felt the need to tweak the image, you could use the knobs to alter size and centering. Changing modes again would require another tweak. The last CRT monitor I purchased new before moving to a flat panel was this ViewSonic G220FB in 2004. It is quite a bit fancier as it has its own on-screen display and it can recall the previously set size and position for a given resolution. While this ability to adjust the image, which was arguably a necessity, made aspect ratio rather subjective, the screen itself still had a 4 to 3 aspect ratio, similar to TVs at the time. One of the most common modes used for DOS gaming was VGA Mode 13H, a mode that uses the aforementioned 320x200 display resolution with 256 colors. Again, it is a 4 to 3 resolution, and I would go so far as to say that if a game was developed in 320x200 and wasn't intended to be 4 to 3, it was an oversight, a compromise, or indifference on the part of the developer. And that's okay, but those games are the exception and not the rule. Let's tackle a few specifics to help anchor the rule that is 4 to 3. For starters, there is some commentary I can give with absolute certainty as it comes from something I developed on my own during the mid-90s. It isn't a playable game, just an RPG exercise that allowed me to have a bit of fun programming using mode 13H. The coding was done in Borland C++ 3.0 and the graphics were drawn using Autodesk Animator. I developed in 4 to 3, did art in 4 to 3, and I never used the circle tool. Even though I mentioned circles as a community-based critique to aspect ratio in the Super Nintendo video on the subject, I do not believe they should be considered a standard for determining a developer's intended aspect ratio. That being said, circles seem to be the go-to trait for examination and critique when it comes to aspect ratio. Autodesk Animator does not compensate for the CRT's vertical pixel stretch when creating a circle, and I assume it just uses the midpoint circle algorithm to render it. If I needed to use the circle tool in the paint program I used, I don't know if I would have made adjustments to compensate for the upcoming stretch or simply moved on in the interest of time and quite honestly, not care if the circle didn't look perfect. 
Deluxe Paint 2 for DOS probably uses a midpoint circle algorithm as well, but it also includes an option for square aspect. This provides a bit of compensation when calculating the dimensions used for a circle as well as some of the other shape tools and acknowledge that perhaps you want to alter the calculations for a circle in order for it to appear more circle-ish on your display. At this point, we could probably break into a philosophical discussion as to what exactly is a circle when represented in a low resolution on a PC CRT, but instead, let's look at some games. I saw someone arguing that Doom is designed for widescreen and point to the circle-based sprites as evidence. The irony is that I think Doom serves as a prime example of 4 to 3. There are modern ports of Doom that are widescreen friendly, and the Doom community is amazing when it comes to source ports, graphical updates, and more, but the original 320x200 Doom was designed for a 4 to 3 CRT, plain and simple. The face in the HUD of Doom is often cited as a reason that 4 to 3 is the proper aspect ratio. I agree, but Doom has a few better examples worth examination. Several of the characters of Doom were created using clay. There are a few photos of these available on the web. If we compare the photos of the clay models to the in-game graphics, you get a better idea of what the proportions should be. Here is a clay model of Doom Guy. If we superimpose a 1 to 1 square pixel sprite on the model, a sprite you would see when viewing the game with a widescreen aspect ratio, you can see that the sprite looks rather squat. He doesn't quite reach the height of the model despite more or less matching the width. If you scale that sprite to how it would appear at 4 to 3 on a CRT, you get a much closer match to the clay model. Likewise, the Cyberdemon image is a similar story. You can see how the model's imported photo looks squished versus the real life counterpart, so it stretches to the appropriate dimensions when viewed on a 4 to 3 CRT. This last example is a doozy. Let's compare the Dune title screen on PC with the Super Nintendo port. Just as it takes a vertical stretch for a PC's 320x200 to fill a CRT, the Super Nintendo undergoes a horizontal stretch. The aspect ratio of Doom's title screen on PC matches the Super Nintendo port when each is output to a CRT display. Let's take a look at another game where we can use comparisons to a real-life counterpart to favor 4 to 3. Among some of the best 320x200 art I've enjoyed while playing DOS games is Sierra's King's Quest VI. Alexander looks a bit squished here when viewing the game with square pixels, but he appears normal after stretching to 4 to 3. The change is more drastic when viewing his portrait during a conversation. As for a real-life example, a lithograph of the Lord of the Dead background was made available for fans to purchase. This art matches the scene in 4 to 3. Finally, most VGA Sierra games at the time displayed the Sierra logo. In 4 to 3, it is a proper circle and matches the logo on the game box. So what if some of the counterexamples that argue that 320 by 200 should be a square pixel aspect ratio resulting in a 16 to 10 image? I can't speak for the developers of those games, but I do have a theory. If you were developing cross-platform games in the early 90s, you had a couple of common resolutions to consider. 320 by 200 for DOS, Atari ST, and NTSC Amiga, and 320 x 256 for PAL Amiga. I've seen Lure of the Temptress for DOS, cited as one game designed for a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, but I personally believe it was designed for a 4 to 3 aspect ratio at a resolution of 320 by 256, perhaps using a PAL Amiga system for art development. By intentionally ignoring the bottom 56 lines at a resolution of 320 by 256, you can create art and easily fit it inside 320 by 200 on other platforms. If a game was designed to use the full 320x256 resolution on the PAL Amiga, it would need to have significant alterations to the graphics to fit a 320x200 presentation, regardless of the original intended aspect ratio. The first option of dropping the extra 56 lines from your vertical resolution would seem to be the easier option for cross-platform development. Again, this is just a theory, but it would easily explain, in my opinion, why some Mode 13H DOS games falsely appear to have been designed with a 16 to 10 aspect ratio in mind. If this theory is true, it would also acknowledge some bit of developer indifference when it comes to aspect ratio. Porting a PC game to a console of the era would most likely demand similar compromises. So what about the modern era on a fixed pixel display? DOS emulators such as DOSBox or ScumVM have options for aspect ratio correction. For DOSBox, edit the configuration file and set aspect equal true. For ScumVM, select the options button and check the box that says aspect ratio correction. For a downloaded game from good old games, many of them already default to a 4 to 3 aspect ratio. 
Tyrion is one example. I did a fresh download from my GOG library, installed it, and it looks like this. The GOG games that use DOSBox as an emulation backbone have a per-game configuration utility that is useful for changing options for a given game, and here are the options for Tyrion. They are typical of a few of the other games I have seen, although admittedly I don't have many. Keep Aspect Ratio is the term used to activate 4 to 3. Lure of the Temptress also defaults to 4 to 3, but as mentioned earlier, it is possible you want this one to have more of a widescreen aspect ratio. This game uses Scum VM and sadly doesn't have a graphical configuration program, or at least not at the time I downloaded it. To alter the aspect ratio, I edited the file lure.ini in the directory for the game and altered the aspect ratio setting. If your eyes are now open when it comes to DOS aspect ratio, you may wish to adjust emulation of 4 to 3 for all or most of your games on your LCD display. Unfortunately, there is a caveat. Scaling. Chances are I am asking you to choose the lesser of two evils, either of which could trigger your OCD. Do you want an improper aspect ratio that fits your screen, or a proper aspect ratio with potential scaling artifacts? So what about more accurate screenshots on websites? I read about one two-step process that I thought was pretty good. To scale a screenshot to 640 by 480 take a native resolution image at 320 x 200 and first scale it up to 640 x 1200 with nearest neighbor scaling. This doubles the horizontal resolution to its final size with no interpolation while setting up a large vertical area for step 2. Reduce it down to 640 x 480 using bilinear scaling. This creates an aspect ratio corrected image with an emphasis on the vertical stretch. For something like a user uploaded image to Wikipedia, this is on a user to perform. But for a giant site such as Steam or GOG, places where you purchase these games, it seems like their methodology for adding a game to the store should include a script to resize and adjust for more accurate screenshots. Ideally, they could add an aspect ratio value to the game database and resize existing screenshots appropriately, saving the need to re-upload images. It's just an idea. So does it matter to you what the aspect ratio is for DOS games? I assume that a stretch to widescreen doesn't bother many of you, and I wonder how far it can be stretched before most people would notice. I hope you enjoyed this examination of aspect ratio for DOS gaming. If you would like to see more videos like this one, please like and subscribe. I enjoy chatting with you guys, so please leave a comment, tell me what your favorite DOS game is and how you go about playing it today. If you would like to contribute to Patreon, I have left the link in the video description. Thanks for watching and CD backslash monkey.